which of these two items, the Gomez Rock Phase 2 or the massive stone block of Otak Shrine, will breach a score of 300 with Strahd's Ring the Bell Challenge. Get comfy, this was a journey so let me set the scene. In the comments of three of my previous Ring the Bell videos, one of the most suggested things to drop on Strahd's Bell were these two very items. Let's quickly catch you up as to where and how to get them. Firstly, in case you don't know them, this is Goma, a ghastly beast. Just don't tell it, it'll hurt its feelings. You'll find it in the Fire Temple, which can be refound in the depths. Here's the location of it, which is near the U.S. Nodge Light Route, if I've said that right. It'll respawn if you defeat it every Blood Moon. If you don't know, the first phase of the Goma spits out three smaller rocks and the second creates a ring around you of bigger ones. For this Bell Challenge, we'll need the bigger boys, so fuse to one or more and then head to Terrytown to our cute little friend Goron Pelison. For the cost of 20 rupees, Pelison will separate the Gloom Rock or anything else you might want to retain and leave it for collection. You'll need to fuse it to something to keep it in your auto build collection. Oh, and in case you're wondering, here's the size difference between Phase 1 and Phase 2. And for the same cost, I know which one I'll be choosing. Same deal for the big block, which can be found here at the top left of the map at the Otak Shrine. Once inside, break down the pillar holding it up and get access to it, drop something to fuse it to. I'd recommend putting it at the very corner so that we can fuse a few of these bad boys together. I already had a ring of Goma rocks from a previous video where I tried this as a weapon against some baddies. Be sure to check it out. So I constructed a rickety tower to test this out. For whatever reason, despite falling on the bell, it doesn't seem to do anything. So I tried again just to be sure. Nope. Doesn't work. Let's change tact. So I fused this Goma Rock to a big OTAC block. Cool guys, don't look at explosions, right? So I used a slightly fancier rig to allow me to ascend to the highest point possible before Strahd calls me back. I dropped the load and Strahd had this to say. A little disappointing, but I'm one to adapt. Next step was to build a mega block of OTAC blocks, like biology starting multiplying from 1 to 2, 2 to 4 and so on until I reached a point that I couldn't fuse any more together. Time to put this to the test. So up I go, start at the top of my launch point and drop this. This is when things started to fall apart, literally. As this mega fuse fell towards the bell, I watched as my launch pad tower collapsed below me. Then Strahd eggs me on with a 225. Due to this problem of too many items fused together at one time in one area, I went simpler. I took one of the Yiga schematics, added a flame emitter to it, and up I went. The idea was that I'd have an auto build ready as close to the callback point as possible. The added benefit was that it was safe from fall damage, as we've learned to expect. Over to you, Strahd, at the news desk. Ah. Oh. At least it's my highest score so far. Let's keep trying. At this point, I thought I'd better give the Goma Ring of Fire another crack, so up I went, to the point where I'd breached the 255 altitude point and I was called back by Strahd. Then I have a view from below of the Goma Hula Hoop. What the heck, man? No, we're not finished. Not by a long shot. Mm. Oh, if you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and tell me if you see the cool animation on the button. No, not the one in the video, the one in YouTube. Okay, back to the video. The flaw with my 12 block creation was that each said block I was fusing to had a Keese eyeball already pre-fused in auto build. So I wanted to source as many of these raw OTAC blocks as possible. So I went into the OTAC shrine, pinched a block, exited and re-entered until I filled up as many of my weapons and shields as possible. I also sourced two other blocks, the iron boxes which are found in the labyrinths and some cement blocks that you can find from the Akala Sky Archipelago. Here are the three blocks lined up side by side just to see their comparative size. While I had all three blocks here, I thought I'd test their attraction to each other in the hope to figure out which is heavier than the other. No major signs here except that in theory the denser, heavier object would attract the lighter one. So from this I concluded that the Otak Shrine block was the heaviest, followed by the Iron Box and the Akala block. 
I painstakingly detached the 10 OTAC blocks that I'd hoarded using Pelison and I stood up on my iron box working from the bottom due to the sheer size to make a 10 stack of OTAC shrine blocks and added two rockets to finish it off. Now I've got myself a 10 stack of cement, iron and OTAC blocks to test this out. Hey Strahd, I'm back! Ah. Hmm. 194 for the cement blocks. Let's see what the iron boxes do. Okay, slightly better. 242. Let's try the OTAC blocks. Wait, what? How can the iron block and the OTAC shrine tower get the same score given their size difference? But then I thought about it. Here's a visual. Each iron box is half the height of the OTAC block. The auto build constructs from the center point of the build, which means the lowest point of the OTAC tower has a 25% head start of the smaller blocks. So how do I fix this? After trying and failing to get a Zonai Hoverstone like this, well, this is where I went into a bit of a rabbit hole. I found a Discord called the Hyrule Engineers Club, so I invited myself to it and found Professor Parsnips who intrigued me with this ingenious contraption. I'll call it the Zonai Elevator. Not sure why the cooking pot works, but a big battery also works. I didn't have the time to research as I was too busy with this video. If you know, let me know in the comments. Anyway, placing the elevator just off the edge of the target takes me just past the bell without ringing it. And like space launch missions, I lose my junk which falls to the ground dramatically. With this new perch, I thought I could leave an auto-built tower down below, rise up with the elevator and grab it. But I couldn't reach it with Ultra Hand. By accident, I found out that the 10 OTAC block tower is interestingly as tall as the Strad callback point of 255. At least now I could grab it, rotate it and drop it. The only problem was I wasn't engaging the rockets that are built into this auto-build. I stumbled that I could auto build, then immediately catch it with recall, then I could use the ultra hand to grab the block lower than me, lift it up, and then recall it to freeze it again, ultra hand it back up again. I kept doing this until I got the block above my head, where I would snap my fingers and stop the recall, then fire my arrow to trigger the rockets. Ah. Yes! With this new high score reached, I wanted to max out this technique up to the fuse limit and rather than go through the pain of sourcing a whole bunch of iron box, I improvised. I took off the rockets of my existing tower, did it again for a second one, fused both of these together and then added a shiny new rocket and took to the sky. I juggled the tower again with recall and ultra hand and then let her rip. And Strahd said, hit that subscribe button. Well, he didn't, but please do. But this is what he said. Is all this effort worth it for a ruby? No, but it was fun. Here's the Gloom Rocks vs Gloom Hands video for you to check out next, or hit the subscribe if you haven't already to binge watch my other videos. Thanks for watching.